Come on, please. What are you going to do? How are you going to react to this? I'm pretty close. Oh, and I still don't want a bar of it. G'day, guys. My name's Josh. Yo, can call me Ja Woodle. And welcome back once again to Seven Days to Die Alpha 17. We are back in Ja Woodle Park to continue experimenting and testing our brand new accidental and potentially my favorite discovery, the zombie force field. If you're not familiar with the zombie force field, I do recommend going and watching the other couple of videos on it so you know what it is, how it works, why it works, and how you can use it for your bases. But I'm super excited to be back working with it again because it's kind of taken me back to how I started in Alpha 17. Being into Woodle Park, building bases, testing AI to breaking point, and seeing what cool ways and cool bases I could build to fight against the zombie hordes. So the zombie force field, I've already done a fair bit of testing on already. You can see I've got this one where it protects my killing corridor. You can see this one where it's a, a melee fighting platform. And that one over there where it protects all your valuable stuff with an invisible force field moat around your base. But there's one thing that I've kind of been thinking about that I'm really excited to try and try out. And it's taking something from real life and putting it into seven days. So if you've ever been to a farm or you live in the outback of Australia, for example, or anything like that, or anywhere where there's sheep or cattle or something like with hooves, you would know that at every gate on that farm, farm or the land that they live on, there would be a cattle grid, which is basically a bunch of poles that go across, which are close enough together that a car or people can walk across it without slipping through, but the hooves of livestock will slot through so your sheep can't escape. And that seems like a pretty fucking fantastic idea, given that in this kind of environment, there's a bunch of things you don't want to get in or out of your walls, being the zombies, but you want to be able to get your jeep or your vehicle in and out. So I want to know, can I build some kind of game? Gateway similar to this that will allow me to come and go as I please without having to build a drawbridge But also stop the zombies from coming into that. So that's what I'm here to experiment with. That's what I'm here to test I just need to find somewhere to build another wall So I'm just gonna build a little bit of a wall here. Maybe two wide should be fine And I know what you're thinking. You're like, why don't you just use the gates of Jaboodle Park? And that's because there's a racetrack over there And even though like inserting a cattle grid into the racetrack would be kind of cool Testing it with the zombies and stuff. There's just too much risk there because if they get loose and start breaking breaking all the shit over there, then I just don't want to have to rebuild it all again. It's looked way too long the first time. I've already had one knee collapse of this world. I can see it's really not as good as it used to be. There's a lot of glitches all over the place, but it's still doing the job for me. But I just don't want to tempt fate, you know? I don't want to try and push it and potentially break some shit if I don't really have to. So I'll just build a nice, thick, strong wall over here and see if I can make some sort of gate through it where a jeep can easily pass through, but the zombies cannot. And if this works out, there's a couple of little carryover ideas that lead from this. I mean, look, you can have a big wall around your compound and have your entry point for your jeep just to be nice and easy across a cattle grid. But what about like a garage? What about that kind of stuff? What about something a little bit more, like a bit smaller, a bit more usable if you don't want to spend all the resources making a bloody giant drawbridge? Because that shit's expensive. And I don't know about you, but it, like putting, what is it? A whole, I think it's like a hundred iron or something like that. Uh, drawbridge. What are you? A hundred iron, a thousand wood, twenty springs. If I don't want to invest that much raw materials into some way to protect the zombies coming into my garage. Why not just use a force field? I want to know if that's going to work for me too. But first, I have to make sure the idea in itself is actually viable. I've made the gap between the walls five blocks wide for a couple of reasons. The first one being that being an odd number, there is now a center block. So you can make things have nice symmetricality without ruining the entire thing. And the other thing about that is that if you're trying to make things all line up, the drawbridge is four blocks across and then the garage door is three blocks across. And that's always annoyed me so much. Much. The garage door where you're gonna put on the other side, the biggest door you can make in seven days, on the other side probably of a drawbridge, is it doesn't line up with the drawbridge. Either the drawbridge needs to be three wide, or you need to have a door that's four wide. But in lieu of having that, why not make this five wide so that when I get a garage door and put it over here, it's going to actually sit in the middle, it's going to be nice and symmetrical, and we're all gonna be happy and it's gonna be aesthetically pleasing. Because as always, every time I mention it, I have to say, aesthetics matter more than anything. Aesthetics and symmetricality are the most important parts of the apocalypse. If you were having trouble visualizing that, I've rigged up a little demonstration here just to show it off. Like, look at that. You can't put that door in the middle of the block to make the, the drawbridge actually line up. It's always going to look off and it's always going to look ugly. So we're not going to do that one. I'm going to get rid of all of this, destroy all of that so it's all nice and clean. Now, I've built myself a nice big thick wall, admittedly a pretty strong wall to start with. It's two block deep of concrete, but this could be anything. This could be a picket fence for like, you could just get some wood spikes and make a 
palisade on top of a hill, but you still need a way to make sure the zombies don't just come charging through the wall with their stupid sledgehammer hands and destroy everything you've worked so hard to create. So first from there, just say you want to put your garage door on the other side. Just like, uh, yeah, right about there. That looks fine. That you, like, you build your wall out to make sure it all meets up. And you can have yourself a nice even, a nice symmetrical little entryway to your compound without having to sacrifice something being out of line. Because something out of line, if, if you're like me, something sitting out of line or being out of place will just annoy the shit out of me for as long as my tits are drooping. I finished building the gate and I put a little bit of love and affection into it and rounded some of the corners and stuff because I want to try and get across the point that like this is going to be the weakest part of the wall. If you're cruising up here, you open the door, you cruise on through. If you're running away from a bunch of zombies or if you piss off or Yeti or something who's wandering around or a biker just outside your wall, the only place they're going to come to, they're going to get stuck inside this little cavity here. They're not going to leave. They're just going to start beating down your walls. And if you've taken the time and effort to round out the corners and make it look nice, you're going to get real pissed off if one stupid zombie comes in and starts ruining things, let alone like a wandering horde or something. Wandering horde comes up here. This is where they're going to get caught. This is where they're going to start destroying things. So you want to avoid that at all costs. So basically, I've got my Jeep over here. The idea being, you can roll up on the Jeep, cruise through this door easy as you like. In fact, I think that might even be a little bit too small. I think I think the Jeep is like two and a bit blocks high. So you hit your lights. Oh, God, if my frames can keep up. You hit your lights on the wall, I think. Yep, you do. In fact, you never hit the lights. You hit your exhaust pipes. All right, maybe, maybe the Jeep's not a good example. We might change it over to be a bike instead now that I've completely ruined the blocks on top of this. So while I do the repairs, that's kind of the idea behind this. You want to protect your investment, protect your aesthetics, and not ruin your day by having a horde show up and break everything. So... With all of that there, this is where I'm going to start building my cattle grid, I think. All across here, I'm going to get rid of this top soil. I'm going to keep uh, as much of the original ground underneath the wall as possible. Because as we discovered when we were building this, when you want to have your supports underneath each of your columns, again, go watch that video if you want to see all the in-depth results. But if you try and replace a column of dirt underneath what you're building, the zombies don't get fooled by that. According to the game, those are replaced blocks. They're, like, they're, they're not... Not the same as like the generated terrain so the zombies will treat it differently so you want to keep the original dirt under here as original as possible and dig this to be about three down and the way i explain that it sounds like suddenly this is a cooking show it's a cooking show for bases i'm actually going to go a little bit more than just the little hole just in front of the gate and i'm going to build it through to the other side because i want to make sure that no zombie is going to come in here thinking that this is an option for them so i'm going to go all the way back and also build because we know well, the lack of structural integrity of sand is a real issue I'm also going to build uh, a little ring around the outside just like that to uh, actually attach all of my arrow slots to. That should hopefully work reasonably well. Going from the results from some of our other tests, this should hopefully be reasonably straightforward. And if not, well, then we'll keep doing experiments till we figure out what the appropriate measure of arrows to depth to whatever I'm missing is going to be. So all the way across there, just like that. So that's all sitting on the ground. Important to note, you don't uh, put any pillars down here. Don't put any support pillars, as we found out in the first test of these things, any support pillars down here will be a bad idea for you and your base's survival. So let's get this and put the... Can you go the right way, please? There we go, like that. They're all pre-painted red, because why not? Save myself some time later. Pre-painted blocks is definitely a good idea. So all the way through here, if I make these arrow slits, then that should hopefully trick the AI enough that this will be a relatively useful cattle grid. However, looking at this... I mean, if I've got to make it a cattle grid, they've got to go the right way. That way, your sheep and cows can escape. I need to turn them around so that all the lines are horizontal. Before I do anything else, I'm going to put down these sheets just around the outside of the main blocks for the entryway. And I guess the other side as well. Because if you try and go from like the normal like generated terrain onto blocks you've placed, you can see there's a pretty harsh little lip there. And you will, especially like a lot of the vehicles in this game, that'll count as an actual collision. And you'll start doing some damage to your blocks if you don't cover up that little damage. Divots. So we'll go around there. Just like on the golf course, got to make sure you replace your divots. Otherwise, you're going to piss a lot of people or your vehicle off. So just go like that. Oh, that was the wrong place. Just like that. There we go. So that should cover all the little gaps. There's no... Oh, there's a little shadow there. That should be pretty okay. All right. That should be good to go. Let's jump on our motorcycle and just give that a red hot crack. So come down here. You're coming home from a raid. Straight in. Straight over. No clunking. No braking. No nothing. Everything is a-okay. But... 
We're not here to test out the, the wonders of a motorcycle and some sheets over some gaps. We're here to test to see how Chelsea is going to deal with this new issue that we've placed in front of us. Pop our soul out, come over here and get a couple of Chelsea's just in front of us there and see how they are going to react to this. Get their attention. Come on, please. What are you going to do? How are you going to react to this? I'm pretty close. Oh, and I still don't want a bar of it. That is perfect. I mean, they're going to continue running all the way around to the other side. They're still going to be able to get me trying to beat through that wall, probably. Yeah, now they are. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's to be expected. I didn't finish off, like, the rest of the wall all the way around. So the only way for them to get in is to continue around the side. But that's kind of what I wanted. As, like, a garage entry, for example, if you had your base and this was your way in and out, but you didn't want to build that stupid drawbridge, you could build this and the zombies will ignore it completely and go somewhere else. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. But now, like, the next logical... Uh, Lock, lock conclusion. The next step to this is to build the rest of this wall, make an actual garage, like an actual secure building, and see how they react to that. I really wish there was a way that you could turn on the field commands from the POI editor. I mean, you can't do it in normal survival, and I get that, but there should be a way, there should be a console command for me to go in and turn on the fill feature. Being able to, like, fill this whole area would make my life so much easier, because all you have to do is go like this. Uh, in fact, not even like that. I could just go from, like, say, let's go from here all the way up to here. I just go J and I'd fill it with the block that I'm currently holding but I don't have that available to me because it's technically a survival world I'm just using god mode cheats ah oh, I just I, I miss it you know that'd make my life so much better if I could build these big things quicker right so there we go a nice secure pen for all my vehicles I'm not gonna put the roof on it because well first of all I can't be bothered and second of all I'd like to do something else with my day today other than just build a giant garage purely to test how Chelsea's going to run and hopefully not try and break through the walls I mean I am expecting as at least some sort of breakage here. Well, I'm just trying to make sure they don't focus on the entryway. That's the weak point. I want to make sure that they run somewhere else. They don't see this as an option and try and break their way in somewhere else. You can't avoid that. You have to build something else like a killing corridor or something to try and uh, completely remove their breaking abilities and make sure they don't actually get to your walls at all. But I just want to know if that's there, are they still going to see that as the weak point or are they going to move off somewhere else and try and break in elsewhere? So there's only one way to find out. Out. Let's get a bunch of Chelsea's and put you all the way out here. Is the AI on or is it off? I can't tell right now. If I, if I shoot a gun, will you tell me? Okay, AI is off, on. Yeah, okay, come towards me a little bit and then off again. All right, you stay there. I'm going to put my body just in here. The doors are closed. So this is like, you know, this is about as secure as it will ever really be. Let's get you out of like that. Go over here. All right, Chelsea, this is your time to shine. Show me what you got. What are you going to do this time? Oh, I, I, I didn't shoot her, but will now because she fell over. Got no time for weaklings like that. Yeah, nah, see, they, they're, they're trying to World War Z up over the walls. That's not okay. But they're not looking at this and going, yes, this is the way to break down. So even if I open this door, will they, will they still see that as the weak point or will they go somewhere else? Now, nah, look at that. There's a perfectly good opening right there and they're completely ignoring it. That's exactly what I wanted. So that means that if you had this like as the opening to your garage, in fact, you know what? Even further than that, if you went like this and got rid of that door completely, because you know what? You don't like doors. They're too enclosing. They're too claustrophobic. You don't want to deal with that shit. You can have a bunch of Chelsea's out there. They'll run straight towards you and then go, mm, uh, yeah, nah, and talk off somewhere else. And then if it gets a little bit too much, you just jump on, uh, excuse me, jump on your bike like that. Take off into the sunset. No having to worry about doors. No having to close drawbridges behind you. Like in the hardcore survival series where I had to get off my bike and open and close two drawbridges every time just to make it secure. You can cruise around the countryside easy as you like and then duck straight back in and not have to worry about closing up shop behind you. It's zombie proof. It's perfect. It's working exactly how I wanted it to. I'm actually really happy with that because some of these things, I mean, that one there, I probably wouldn't use it personally because that's a lot of extra building for just a little bit of advantage. You know, like, the cost of like the materials and the work and the time for how much better it actually is like it's not that ratio isn't quite enough to tempt me into spending all the time tunneling out a giant chasm underneath my killing corridor the killing corridor works just fine as it is i mean i, I might build something like this because a melee base something as efficient as that where you can get the loot so easily is actually pretty helpful and like something like this that i could use to like make a storage area like a bank or something where all my valuable shit is that i just don't want to risk accidentally losing in one 
one bad horde knight. I could probably use a couple of those ones, but this one in particular is something I absolutely would build because everyone has a garage. Everyone has somewhere they want to keep their vehicles or an entryway into their base or their compound that they don't want zombies to follow them into. They don't want them to come through and they probably don't want to have to be bothered opening and closing a bunch of drawbridges to try and get that to work. So something like this is super cost efficient, super time efficient and works super duper well. This is definitely something that I'll be building into my garages from here on out. At least until Alpha 18 where they're probably going to release a Zawoodle patch and undo all of the things that I've come up with to get around all of their AI. AI even, not RI. I don't know why I sounded like a pirate for some reason. They're RI. But <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I must be really sleep deprived. But that works perfectly. I'm super happy with that. I'll definitely be incorporating that into some of my bases. I was just kind of flying around Zawoodle Park looking for things that I could probably upgrade using the zombie force field. This one, for example, I probably could have put a cattle grid into. That seems like a pretty good place, but it's got the uh, the big solid doors there instead of using the drawbridges. But there's a lot of such cool stuff inside Zawoodle Park. And now that I've got the zombie force field, I reckon a lot of them could probably use that as an upgrade to make them work just a little bit better or make them work just a little bit cooler. It just it makes me so happy to be back doing this. I'm so excited to be back testing AI and building shit again. It's where I started with Alpha 17. It's what I want to be doing in Alpha 17. And I'd just love to be back here. This working so well and this general design has actually like kickstarted a couple of other ideas inside my head that I want to try out. I've got more ideas to use this zombie force field for. There's lots of different ways I reckon I could use it. And there's a lot of good things that I think will make the game just that little bit more easy to play. I mean, you could use it for whatever you want, but if there's like quality of life improvements you can get from using this, like for example, having a door that actually sits in the middle of your freaking entryway, because that's always annoyed me ever since the drawbridges first came out way back when. It's always annoyed me that those things never actually lined up. So now it actually can. But yeah, there's a lot of things that are now in my head. This has inspired me to do some other things, and I reckon there's some pretty cool shit I can build using that new zombie force field. God, it works so well. I'm so happy it works so well. From an accidental, like, stumbling across it with that first loot base and then not actually realizing what I had. And then one day it just kind of clicked in my head. I was like, hey, hang on a second. Zombies don't run across arrow slots. There's definitely a way I could use that to break the AI. And sure enough, you really easily can. So that's awesome. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to have to come and try out some of these other wacky ideas I've got rattling around in my noggin in another episode. Because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If y'all like to make sure the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter if I don't talk to you there first. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.